Hello boys and girls, welcome to our vodcast on how to use a dichotomous key. So this video is going to show you instructions, explain what a dichotomous key is and what the parts are, some key terms on leaf characteristics that you need to understand, and how to use this dichotomous key to identify um, the leaves of a tree and identify the species of the tree at which it came from. So if we take a look to the left here, this is what you call a dichotomous key. Di means two, so if you notice that each statement here comes in pairs of two. These are called couplets. So you have 1a or 1b, 2a or 2b, 3a or 3b, 4a and 4b, and so forth. So these are your couplets. And what the couplets do is they make statements based on the characteristics of a leaf. So for example, couplet A1 says the leaves are needle-like or scale-like, and couplet B says the leaves are not at all needle-like or scale-like. So sometimes they'll state a characteristic and then basically in the second couplet state that it's not that characteristic or what they'll do is they will state a characteristic and then state the opposite or alternative um, to that characteristic. So that's what a dichotomous key is and as you can tell when you go across a couplet you'll either see one of two things. You'll see which couplet to go to next. That's what these numbers refer to. So this means I have to go to couplet number two and this means I have to go to couplet number three or you'll get a species name and that at, at that point you've identified the species that you were looking at. Okay so for this lab you're gonna have to identify 13 types of leaves. All right so this is your back page of the lab and this is your um, answer sheet. So this is the space where you have to write down the names of the leaves. All right, so let's take a look at some key terms you have to understand about leaves so you know how to use this. One, let's take a look at leaf shapes. Leaf shapes can come in circular patterns. Now, a circular pattern doesn't necessarily mean the leaf is actually round, smooth, and circular. It could have these lobes and these teeth pointing out, but if you connected those teeth together, they would make somewhat of a circular pattern. This heart-shaped leaf is like an upside-down heart. Triangular is kind of triangle-shaped, except the bottom. Of the triangle isn't pointy it's rounded off lance okay lance is that shape it has a very similar shape to the lances that knights used to use during jousts you know those long pointy sticks that they would have when they rode on horses and stabbed each other with them so that's what a lance is oval is an oval shape elliptical looks more like a squashed oval it's a little bit more um narrower in shape and wider. Egg is your typical edge, egg shape, and then you have your diamond shape here. Next, you have leaf arrangements on a twig. You have three types, alternate, opposite, and world. Now, you don't have the actual twigs of the leaf, that the leaves sit on, like the main branches that they come off of, so you can't actually see their arrangement, but if you take a look at the top here, here's the arrangement on a twig, okay? So this leaf here has an alternate arrangement, which means if you see this tree out in the wild, you'll see that its leaves are one, one's lower on one side and a little bit higher on the opposite side, and it staggers, so forth. Leaf margins, okay? These are the edges of the leaves, kind of like how margins are the edges of the paper that you might write on or read on. So smooth means it's just kind of like a smooth edge here. There's no bumps, curves, sharp points or anything. Wavy is kind of wavy. Not a lot of deep cuts going towards what's called the midrib, but um, it's not smooth either. It looks kind of bumpy, so that's the wavy one. Serrate looks like it's got jagged teeth to it, much like a serrated steak knife or something. Those knives have the, the many points on them, so you can cut your meat. So this is your serrated um, leaf. And then you can have what's called a doubly serrate. A doubly serrated leaf has teeth, much like a regular serrated leaf, but some of those teeth actually have two teeth together, like you could see right over here. Okay, so that's your doubly serrate if you see two jagged teeth right next to each other. And then lobed, here you have the teeth again of the leaf. They're a little bit more rounded off, but in a lobe leaf, those spaces in between the teeth are cut pretty uh, deep. So as you can see, they cut really close to the midrib or deeper towards the midrib than any of these edges do here. So that would make it lobed. Now you have different types of leaves, okay? So a simple leaf is just one single leaflet. Like we typically call um, this thing a leaf and that can be referred to as a leaf just like in the title, but technically it's called a leaflet. And here's why. So here we have one leaflet, that's one simple leaf. Here we have what's called a palmately compound leaf. 
A compound leaf has many leaflets, two or more leaflets. So if we take a look here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaflets all joined in the middle. Now, I always remember palmately as like this looks like a hand and the leaves are joined at the palm, much like how your fingers kind of look like they connect at the palm. And then each leaf is like a finger. So this is your palmately compound leaf. Once we get down here, we have once pinnately compound leaves and we have twice pinnately compound leaves. Once pinnately compound leaves are leaves that have your main branch here, but then they have the secondary branch called the petiole. Okay, so if we take a look at the simple leaf, the petiole is like the stem of the leaf. So here we have one petiole here and then all the leaflets come out of it. So we have one pinnately, which is one petiole. Okay, then here when we, where we have twice pinnately, we have our main branch and then we have one petiole and then a second petiole. So that's where the word twice comes from. The second petiole has the leaflets on them. So that's the difference between a once pinnately, one petiole, and twice pinnately, two petioles. All right, so those are important characteristics to remember when they come up in the dichotomous key. So let's do this one together. All right, so we're going to start at, as always, couplet number one. The leaves here are needle-like or scale-like, or they're not at all needle-like or scale-like. So what that means is, does this leaf look like a needle or is it scaly? Well, this leaf is definitely not scaly because a scaly leaf looks like this. And it's definitely not needle-like because, remember, needle-like leaves, if you always want to remember what a needle-like leaf looks like, think about the pine needles on your Christmas tree. Does this look like a leaf on your Christmas tree? If it does not, then it's not needle-like. So since it's not needle-like, it agrees with um, couplet number 1B, so I'm going to move on over to the right and see what it tells me to do. Now it tells me to go to couplet number 3. So I'm going to jump down to number 3. Now it says leaves are opposite or they're alternate. I'm going to take a look at the top of my card, and as I stated before, the arrangement on a twig is stated up here, so it has an alternate arrangement. Easy enough. Now I move all the way over to the right and see that it tells me that go it tells me to go to couplet number five. Now I'm going to move to couplet number five. It asks me, or it says to me, the leaves are simple or the leaves are compound. So remember again, a simple leaf is one leaflet, compound is two or more. All right, so this is a compound leaf, this is a compound leaf, this is a compound leaf. If I take a look here, I notice that I only have one leaflet. So that get, makes this a simple leaf. So I run back up to the top and I see that simple leaves are supposed to go to couplet number six. So now I'm gonna take a look at couplet number six. Leaves are lobed, which means the spaces between the teeth run a quarter or more to the center of the leaf. So if I take a look at the spaces between the teeth, so here's one tooth and here's another tooth. So each pointy edge or pointy peak is a tooth. Some of these cuts are pretty deep and they run pretty deep towards the midrib, which is the center of the leaf here. So that's going to make this lobed. So because this leaf is lobed, I'm going to move on over again and it tells me to go to couplet number seven. Now, couplet number seven says, is the outline of the leaf elliptical or broadest above the middle? Or does the outline of the leaf uh, make it circular or nearly so? So if I forget the shapes here, remember circular, if you connect the points of the teeth, it kind of gives a circular shape to the leaf. And elliptical is going to be kind of like, again, long and narrow. But this also says that the top of the leaf or the area above the middle of the leaf is broad. So when I take a look here, I notice that the broadest or widest part of my leaf is below the middle. So if the middle of the leaf is right here, I notice it's broader down here than up there. So that automatically disqualifies bur oak as my choice. So that leaves me with an outline of leaf that's circular or nearly so. And again, if I connect the teeth here, generally it's gonna give me a circular shape. So that's nearly so and that's good enough. So as I take a look, I move over to the side and I see that I have a sycamore leaf. Once I've identified that, I'm going to move down to my answer sheet. Again, this is the last page. And in leaf number two, I'm gonna fill in the name sycamore. And that's all you have to do. You just have to follow the statements and follow where it is that they tell you to go. And eventually you're going to come up with um, the identification of the leaf. So what you and your group are going to do is this. 
you're going to take a leaf sample and on Google Classroom I will tell you which side of the room to take it from so this way we're not mixing up piles of leaves okay and you're going to write in pencil because you're probably going to get this wrong a couple of times so in pencil write in your answers once you write in your answers one of you will go to the Google form on the Google Classroom submit your answers and check your email so whoever submits it check your email because your submissions will be graded immediately on that email that comes from this um, server called Flubaru okay you're gonna open it up and it'll tell you which leaves that you got wrong and which ones you have to fix and you guys can do this as many times as you need to to get it all right so um, you should have plenty of time to get this all done before the end of class each group should take no more than two leaves at a time so this way other groups have leaves to look at and when you are done with your leaf please return it back to the pile in which you got it from so if you got it from the door side of the room then return it to the pile on the door side of the room if you got it from the window side of the room then return it front to the pile on the window side of the room okay and that's it so good luck with this. Um, you guys will probably you guys will do well on it. Typically, students do. If you get it wrong the first time, that's all good. No big deal. You're allowed to go back and fix it again and take the time to do so. There are four of you there. Help each other out. Support each other and do your best. Okay. Um, ultimately, everyone should get a hundred on this because you are going to figure it out as you go along. All right, boys and girls. Good luck with this, and I'll see you next time in class. Take care.